of ages. Praise be to God. Lord, you are our rock, and may we cling to you, Lord. In these last days, may we be encouraged in knowing those that endure to the end shall be saved. Lord, but you are the rock as the waves of life are raging. You are the rock that we can cling to. And Lord, we are going to rise First, the dead in Christ shall rise first, but then those that remain will be caught up in the air. Oh, precious Jesus, Lord, you're our rock. You're our ever-present help. And, Lord, we cling to you tonight and forever. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Sweet, the 
yours, Lord. There's no name sweeter than the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And Lord, you're our Savior, you're our friend, as we've sung here tonight. Oh, Jesus, we just feel your presence. Lord, you've been dwelling in this place all day long. Lord, from 6.30 this morning to 7 o'clock at night, you dwell in this place, Lord.
Jesus, you said that heaven and earth would pass away, but your words would last forever. Jesus, you are the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You simply declared, let there be light. And Lord God, you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You are Emmanuel, God with us. But your words, Lord, will last forever. They will not pass away. Your words, your promises, your proclamations, your truths. Oh, Lord God, we love you tonight. We praise you tonight. Oh, Jesus, there is no name sweeter. There is no name more beautiful than the name of Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior. We praise your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a song I want so much to hear. It just says, Emmanuel, Emmanuel has a name. Unto us a son has been given. Unto us a child will be born, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. He is our everlasting Father, our Prince of Peace. All authority of government shall be placed upon his shoulder. Unto us. A son has been given, and his name 
is Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. God, I ask now for a double portion of your anointing. Lord, use my mouth to be your voice here tonight, and may your word go forth. May lives be changed and souls saved, may we, but may we be encouraged in knowing that you are Emmanuel, and in these last days, you are certainly God with us, in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Amen. Chloe, I'm going to switch back to the lapel so you can cut those other mics. I think I turned them on earlier, and I don't want it to squeal like a pig. So. There we go. Praise the Lord. Well, guys, tonight I just feel led to share I read the verses this morning just to set the tone for Jesus being our healer. But tonight, I'm just going to share in context the power of those verses. And so, I know I just said be seated, but if you guys could stand for the reading of God's Word tonight. And I'm going to be reading Mark chapter 5, verse 36. Sorry about that, I forgot to turn that down. Uh, Mark chapter 5, verse 36, and then Mark chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. As, he, as soon as Jesus heard the word that which was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid, only believe. Mark chapter 2. And again he entered Capernaum after some days... And it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralegal who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralegal was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralegic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your heart? Which is easier to say to the paralegal, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralegal, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went out into the presence of them all so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, basically, as soon as I got those words out of my mouth this morning, and we began to pray first for those that weren't here Miss Patty and Miss Marie, and picked up the little 
jar of anointing oil, Jesus began to work in this house. There was no law in the action. There was no break. There was no buying time. Jesus began to work. And instantly people knew he was here through the presence of his Holy Spirit. To the point in which there were tears that were shed, sins that were confessed, and I believe Jesus did some miracles today in this house. And it sounds like he was working up in children's church too. Praise the Lord. Outside of folks praying for their spiritual well-being and folks praying for the financial well-being, Jesus ministered to every need in this place. And those that stepped forward were not afraid and they only believe. Jesus, in the midst of his ministry, and Mark is, is a unique gospel as they all are, but Mark is, it's just rapid fire. It's only 16 chapters. It's the shortest of the gospels, and it's just one blessing after another as Jesus went. Uh, Mark, like John, does not record the Christmas story, and so it's the beginning of his Galilean ministry right to uh, his crucifixion and resurrection on the third day, praise be to God. But in Mark chapter 5, Jesus is healing a demon-possessed man. He's bringing life to a little girl. And in the midst of all that, he's bringing forth healing to a woman by asking, who touched the hem of my garment? Who touched me, Jesus? But in this case, as Jesus was ministering, and he said to the ruler, this is Mark 5, 36, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, which is verse 35, as he was bringing forth blessing and healing. And one thing about Jesus, and that's something today that was unique. As soon, there were many things happening. If you had noticed, after we finished praying with one, there was usually two or three other people. I felt like the president at the press conference where all the reporters start and the president has to pick which one to ask to answer the question. You know, you have to, there was really no order. And so I was just trying to listen to who called first, you know. And because people were wanting to get in. They were wanting to have prayer because they knew the Lord was here. And I knew they were responding in faith. You could just feel it. In this place today, God was working and God was ministering. But Jesus, he had a lot of different needs taking place, but he is God. Think about that. All the different needs that we have. God was working here, but you know where else he was working? Everywhere else in the world. Jesus wasn't giving a busy signal to anybody. Okay, he was working because he is awesome. He is all powerful. He is everywhere. Well, here, you know, in the midst of all the miracles that he was doing here in Mark chapter 5, he gives one of the greatest statements, I think, that you can find in the Gospels. And he says to the ruler of the synagogue, now think about this, a ruler, one who has prestige, one who has influence, one who has power, but this man was afraid. This man was fearful. This man had a struggle. This man had an issue, but what did Jesus say? Do not believe. Now, you've got to understand something here. You've got to understand this guy is his daughter, his loved one. It appears to be dead. Have you ever been in a place where you thought everything was just so bad? You were just overwhelmed and, and you were just became frantic? And somebody say to you, relax. Yeah, you want to ring their bell. Their world, your world's falling apart and somebody telling you to relax. Well, here is Jesus declaring to him, do not be afraid. But he didn't leave him hanging. He said, do not be afraid. Only believe. Only believe. Believe what? Believe in the power of Jesus Christ to make one who is sick, even to the point of death, alive again to make one who is sick with an issue of blood to be healed to make one who is possessed to be set free 
if we only believe. We like to sing that song a lot when I was growing up. Only believe. If we only believe. You know, we like this, we like, we don't hear it much anymore, but there's a lot of power in that song. But Jesus said here, do not be afraid, only believe. And only means you don't do it with five or six other things. When you believe, you don't do it with an anxious heart. God, I'm not going to be afraid. Jesus just told me not to be afraid. So he's saying, get rid of the anxiety and just believe. Believe in him. Believe that nothing is impossible with God. And today we saw, and when God laid this on my heart on Wednesday night going home from church, and I told my wife, I put a post on Facebook, I put a thing out on the, the PAG membership chat, you know, inviting people to come, is I knew God was working. I knew, he, I knew there would be response. Now, I didn't think it'd be like today, where it was just rapid fire for two and a half hours. And I don't know if you guys noticed this or not, but most people stayed at least till 1230. No one got out of here. And we were 45 minutes past the regular time in which we go for altar prayer. God was working. Do not be afraid. Only believe. In these last days, what great wisdom for us as servants in the front lines not to be afraid. Only believe. Justin, don't be afraid of a six-period day. Only believe. And God showed me. that. Was I, what was I worried about, God? You were working. You were working. I will sustain you. And here I am, one who just preached last Sunday on sustaining faith. Do not be afraid. Only believe. Church, I believe fully tonight. And I've said this before. Folks that come back on a Sunday night, especially after breakfast. What a delicious breakfast. Frank, you know what you're doing, man. What an awesome day. But to come back tonight, you know, to be equipped with the word, to be, to be ministered to, I pray that each and every one of us want to be that church without spot or wrinkle. That fear is not going to get us. We're not going to be afraid of what a political leader is going to do next. We are going to believe and trust our Lord. We are going to believe. We're not going to be afraid of somebody who's possessed. We're not going to be afraid of somebody who's an abuser. We're not going to be afraid of someone who's broken. We're not going to be afraid of someone who is hurting. We're going to believe God to do the miraculous. We're going to trust the Lord to do the miraculous. And if you continue going, I didn't, I didn't, I'm just going to read it just to let you know what he did. And he, Jesus, permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Then he, Jesus, came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw atonement and those who wept and, wa and wailed out loud. When he came in, he said to them, why, why make this commotion? Why weep? This child is not dead but sleeping. I think about, are we making a commotion in these last days with all that's going on? Are we worrying and fretting over nothing if we declare, do not be afraid, and declare only believe? I believe a lot of people left here this morning different than what they came in. I believe, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that Jesus showed himself to be real. And as my wife said, all Hannah talked about was the prayer time. That ministered to her, a six-year-old little girl. What a blessing that is. We don't need to make a commotion and weep in our sadness and our despair. We can be encouraged in knowing God's going to do a miracle. Just like he did with this little girl who was not dead but sleeping. Church, let not your heart be troubled. Jesus is on the scene. And the story in Mark 2 is a story of great faith between two parties. The man who was paralyzed, who was lying in his bed, as well as the four men who carried him. Carried him to the place where Jesus was, but it was crowded. It was filled up. Even the doorway, which usually there's a little extra space there, was overwhelmed with people. 
but they didn't just turn around. My prayer is today is that everyone that wanted prayer got prayed for today. I pray that no one said it was just too crowded and went on home. I pray that we are, everybody who wanted to be prayed over for whatever the reason was, was prayed over today. Even if it had taken us, taken us three hours, we would have stayed until every person was prayed over today. Well, these guys, all of them, needed to exercise their faith. Today, I pray, as we sang that song, Power in the Blood, would you do service, the fourth verse, for Jesus your King. Sometimes the greatest service is to bring somebody to church. Come up with them. Pray over them. Come with them to the altar. Take time to explain the word. And as Jesus came into Capernaum after some days, now he had done many other miracles. He had been in Galilee preaching, declaring this is why he came, carrying out the prophecy of Isaiah. You know, Jesus setting the stage for, for rising early, being a man of prayer. He went on and he healed individuals, dealt with controversy about the Sabbath. I mean, Jesus was was doing great things as he started his ministry, he just cleansed the lepers. He, he was doing a great work. Now he comes on the scene in Capernaum, and people heard he was there. You know what I pray today? I pray people are going to hear about what God did this morning. You know what I'm praying? Because for 17 years, I plagued and pleaded for folks to gather in this place for prayer. If there's an Achilles heel or something that would be a, if something I could change would be a place packed out for prayer. Packed out as we saw this morning. You know, where we're spending two and a half hours in the presence of God just in prayer and, and laying hands on the sick and all those kinds of things. But my prayer is, is that people are going to start and say, you know what, Pastor, we need more of this. Rather than me declaring it, it begin a grassroots effort. Because that took me 17 years and didn't get very far. In the last eight months, I was often here by myself. But when God starts to work, as he did today, and people begin to see what God can do when we don't become afraid and only believe, we can begin to exercise a faith very similar to these four men who were trusting the Lord. And for God to do the miraculous. And immediately many gathered. They gathered where Jesus was. Why? Because a leper had just been healed. Word was spreading fast. May word spread about what God did today. You know what? I pray Chloe testify of her healing. I pray Montana will testify of his grandmother's healing. I pray Terry will testify of his brother David's healing. Matter of fact, I pray David come in here and testify himself. I pray that Joe's stepbrother, Brian, will testify of his healing. I pray that all those that we prayed for today will be a walking testimony. Many people will be gathering. And this little bottle of oil that was filled and that's quickly evaporating will need many more times to fill this thing up because people are gathering together in the presence of the living God, so that there was no longer any room. Could you imagine if we needed all 50 chairs and then a second service on a Sunday morning? That'd be pretty cool. Amen. Amen. And it starts with people who pray. I believe God is doing something different. I believe it is God who is laying the foundation. For this to be a house of prayer. And where there's no room for people even at the doorway. I believe the Lord's going to do it. Here it's what was happening in Capernaum. But what did Jesus do? It says there at the end of verse 2, and he preached the word to them. Church, we need the word so much, so important that the word of God. People forget he was a preacher. We think of him as healer, we think of him as savior, but Jesus was a preacher. And he went from place to place preaching, 
whether it was Galilee, whether it was Capernaum, whether it was where he even went in his hometown and then said a prophet has no honor there because they wanted to throw him off a cliff. But preaching, he preached the word to them. Church, this congregation needs the word. We heard in testimony time. There are many, you know, that have questions. The word of God has answers. And so as we come together for the miracles, may we also come together for the word, praise the Lord. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him bringing a paralegic who was carried by four men. Here they go. These men are on their way. And if you've ever ministered to somebody who was sick and disabled, you're often running a little bit late. Notice they didn't get in there first. Because of sometimes it's an inconvenience taking care of or bringing someone who is sick. In this case, they're on their bed. I mean, how many of us would bring somebody literally in their bed? In their pajamas. Okay? And here they were, and these four men carried them to where Jesus was. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralegal was lying. They didn't just say, well, we can't. It's too crowded. They didn't just go home. They exercised their faith. They went the extra mile. They inconvenienced themselves and said, Lord, we got to get this guy to the Lord. We got to get this guy prayed over. We can't just turn around and go home. Too often, have you ever done that at a restaurant? You look out there and you see the parking lots packed out. There's a line at the door and you say, you know what, I'm going to go to the next place. I pray that no one today, even though there was a line and people were just calling out different needs as soon as we finished, I pray no one said, well, I'll just wait. I'll come back next week. I pray those today who said, I'm not afraid, I only believe, each and every one was ministered to. These individuals were not going to go home until Jesus prayed for them. They were not going to go home until they met the master. And that this man was going to be healed. Think about how bizarre this is. They uncovered the roof. They broke through, which was most likely grass and dried hay. They broke through the roof, cut a hole in it, and let the man down on his bed. Wow! Wow! What faith? Could you imagine if we're sitting here in a service and the next thing you know you see somebody just being dropped down? I mean, I'd love to have the place packed out. And so, wow. It would be an inconvenience just to get that person up our flights of stairs. That's a long flight up there. But they cut a hole in it. But they believed. The paralyzed man, he would have to believe, too, because he would say, just take me home. You know, you'd have to trust somebody to bring you up to a roof to cut a hole and then drop you down in there. Most of us would think, don't do that. You're going to drop me. You're, I'm going to fall over. Wednesday, we had a fun day at school, and you may have seen this on Facebook. I was working with the middle school boys, and we carried them, and... They had to carry me. Two-thirds of the way through, they dropped me. These boys did a great job, though. They worked together, and Mr. Swartz came, Clarence came, and he picked, up, uh, picked me up, and we, got, we finished. But when, you're being, when I'm being carried, Lord, my fate is in these people's hands. If I hit the deck, I'm going down. And I went down. But you know, this man had to exercise some faith in the four who were carrying him. They broke through. They dropped him down to where Jesus was. And look at what Jesus said. When Jesus saw their faith, it wasn't just the paralyzed man, 
but it was the four men carrying him as well. Jesus honored the faith of everyone. Would you do service for Jesus, your king? Think about that. We could play the role of the helpers here, carrying this man, coming up with, uh, coming up with him to where Jesus was when Jesus saw their faith. I don't know about you, but I don't want to quench the faith. I don't want to quench the spirit. I want my faith to be strong and sound and believe that God is working. Even today, you know, praying for different ones and asking God for wisdom and for the gifts. Of, and you may have noticed there were times God just laid a word of knowledge on me. And I shared with them what God was speaking to me. Okay, and, what we, and to give instruction, to give truth, to walk in that. And I believe it was very much the gifts of the Spirit being manifested today. But Jesus saw their faith. And he said to the paralyzed, the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. Notice Jesus, before he brought healing to his body, dealt with his soul. Jesus knew he had an audience of people watching. Jesus knew that perhaps it was this man's sins that was causing his health condition. But he knew his place in eternity, and Jesus forgave his sin first. Son, your sins are forgiven you. This must have been great relief to this paralyzed man. We even heard it today where we know God has brought forgiveness from individuals who had made struggles, who had made wrong choices, who treated their body wrongly with addiction or with sorcery, who maybe were not the best parents. We saw God move today in his loving forgiveness upon us. Because he forgives our sin when we put our faith in him. Son, your sins are forgiven. And as soon as Jesus did this, look at what happened. And verse 6, and some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, why does this man speak blasphemies like this? I wonder if there was anybody sitting here today doubting what God was doing. I wonder if there was anybody here today who was believing that blasphemy was coming out of my mouth. I don't believe there was because God's spirit was here and he was working and people hung around. There was no questions to deal with later like Jesus had to deal with here. And certainly where the spirit of God is, there is unity, there is liberty. And that was definitely evident today. But Jesus, in the midst of this, had to deal with unbelieving people that questioned how could Jesus forgive sin. Well, Jesus is God. He is the great I am. He is the Lord and the Savior. He is God and Christ alone. And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they responded thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Do you know Jesus knows what you're thinking right now? He knows what you're thinking. He knows what's going on in your mind. He knows what's there. He sees the spirit, just like he saw with the ruler whose daughter it appeared to have died. He said, do not be afraid, because Jesus knew he was anxious. What do we think we're doing, hiding something from God? I don't care how great an actor are, you cannot fool God. These individuals, Jesus called it out. He called out what was real. Even today, in words of exhortation and words of knowledge given to individuals, some may say, well, Pastor, you called me out or you called them out or whatever. It was just God speaking and say, hey, God wants you at church. He wants you growing. He wants you a part of this body, this family. Not just for a, press, a special prayer service, but every Sunday, every time we come together, forsake not the fellowship of the brethren. God gives us his word to build us up and instruction that comes to us. And to, and to build our faith. Here Jesus knew he was dealing with unbelief. But notice there in verse 8 it says, but immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit. Wow. Immediately Jesus knew there was doubt. And he asked them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Why are you trying to think about it? When we exercise our faith, we can't be thinking about, well, is that person going to make a scene? Is that person going to be set free? 
Church, we must believe that God is going to minister, that God is going to work, that God is going to forgive, that God is going to heal because He is God. He is the Messiah who can forgive the sins of humankind. Verse 9, which is easier to say to the paralegal, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise, take up your bed and walk. If God can do all things, he puts the burden on them. As believers who declare, do not be afraid, but only believe. Hurts too often we are being intimidated into not standing up for our faith. We are being pushed aside, even though uh, we are called all these ridiculous names, such as a bigot and a person filled with hate. Don't let that intimidate you into not walking in your faith. Jesus is our Lord. He is our Savior. His word is true. He can do all things. And we must declare the word, just as Jesus did here in this question. Which is easier, to say to the paralegal, your sins are forgiven you, or to rise, take up your bed, and walk? They knew he... They knew they didn't believe he could do these things. Jesus can do everything. He can even raise the dead. He can give sight to the blind. Jesus is God. Jesus is God. And he, even though they questioned who his authority was, they called, called him a person who was speaking blasphemies, and Jesus boasts in himself, which is easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, rise, take up your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. The only way he can forgive sins is if he is God. Notice Jesus defined himself as the Son of Man. Which, of course, the two natures of God, fully man, fully God. But only the Messiah could be the Son of Man who would bring about forgiveness of sin. He said to the paralyzed man, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. He had already forgiven the man of his sins. Now he heals the man. A blessing. Have you ever gone thinking you're going to be a blessing and you get blessed? Have you ever gone, you know, asking for prayer for one thing within God, not only heals that thing, but he does a great work in something else? Today, we had several people who, who asked for prayer for a couple of different things, or maybe were prayed for earlier, and then later in the morning, they went back and they asked for something else as God was working. Jesus healed the man after he saved the man or forgave the man of his sins. But look at the instruction that Jesus said. Okay, look at what he said to him. I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. But we see again the word immediately. Church, I know when God laid on my heart Wednesday night after church to, to do a prayer service this morning, I immediately had to put that plan into action. Because I know if I just started thinking about it, I'd start rationalizing and reasoning, and it, and it doesn't happen. Which is immediately why I wrote it, we planned it, changed it up, and said, you know what, we're scrapping the state of the church, and we're Lord, we're going to be obedient to you. And God certainly showed himself to be faithful. Immediately, he arose, took up his bed, and went out in the presence of them all. Think about that. This man was just lowered down through a hole in the roof. So his sins are forgiven him, and he left rejoicing. A lot of people today left rejoicing. People were ministered to that they took communion for the first time in years. God did a work. There was an embracing of sorts. God's spirit is here. I pray we talk about that. But immediately this man, he arose, took up his bed, and went out in the presence of them all. Notice he didn't say, well, Lord, I'm paralyzed. I can't get up. He didn't start drawing attention to his weaknesses. He didn't come back and say, well, I'm disabled. That's not what he did. He immediately, he arose, he took up the bed. And went out in the presence of now think about that if you're a spectator in this crowded room you're completely shocked someone's being dropped from the roof 
you know, and now you see Jesus, who's just rebuked these, these individuals who are unbelievers, and now Jesus forgives the man of his, of his sin, then he heals the man, this man gets up, and he leaves in the presence of all of them. And I guess he didn't hop up out the hole in the roof, he went out the front door. Wow! Wow! What faith! What faith! A real step of faith. Immediately he went out to the presence of them all. And as we finish tonight, the end of verse 12, so that they were all amazed and glorified God. Today, I believe, people stayed well past 1230 because they were amazed at what God was doing. Amazed by what God was doing. And glorified Him. And glorified Him. And look at their last declaratory statement. We never saw anything like this. Well, with Jesus, you're going to say that phrase a lot. When faith is being carried out in your life. I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen a child change so fast into the likeness of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I've never seen a marriage restored like this one. I've never seen God's presence move. I've never seen a miracle take place in my life. Church, I'm trusting the Lord that when individuals that we prayed for today with cancer when they go in for their next scan or their next treatment, that there is nothing there. To the amazement of everybody. And we can say, I've never seen anything like this before. I've, I heard someone, not, not today, but last Sunday, with the children taking communion, I've never seen children be reverent during a service like that. You know, usually what, what churches are going today, if you guys know this or not, but children aren't even coming into most services. You sign them in at the door. You pick them up when you leave. I think we're going to pay for that as a society. I think we need them in here. But then to have them for the communion service, but for them to know and understand, Nancy talked about her grandson, Isaiah. You hear his testimony today? His prayer of thanksgiving? You hear what some of these children say? It's an amazing thing. They're thinking about it. There is a thought process. It's, a, it's, a, it's amazing. There's a seriousness of attitude that is, that is righteous. It's not just, shh, be quiet. You know, now for some children, as they're learning, that's, that's understandable. That's what we want to do. We want to teach them. But when they get to that place of testifying, as difficult as it might be to speak out loud, they want, to they want their voice to join the collective voice of all of us. Here. And you better believe the Father in heaven is receiving it too. They were all amazed and glorified God saying, we never saw anything like this. May that be what we continue to say around here. I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen people for two and a half hours declaring their prayer need for God like today. There wasn't law. There wasn't a break. There wasn't let's sing this song to kind of stir us up again. It was folks not afraid only believing for God to do the miraculous in their life. May today just be the beginning of something amazing as this place becomes a house of prayer like never before where faith is manifested, where we declare to one another, do not be afraid, only Father God, we thank you for today. What an awesome day it has been in your house. Lord God, we thank you 
for being you. Lord God, I pray that each and every one of us here will be obedient quickly to you. And the word immediately will follow us as we declare your gospel, as we bring the sick into this place, as we do service unto thee for such a time as this. Lord God, that immediately you will begin to do the miraculous things, just like we saw today, Lord. Just like we're going to see more and more often your spirit working, people's lives being touched, souls being saved. Lord God, and should, and I believe it will, this place become crowded to the point where we are at capacity and beyond. Lord God, we will see people continue to exercise faith not turning around, not looking at the phobia of too many people in one room, but saying, I want to be in the presence of the living God. I want to soak in His Spirit like water to a sponge. I want to absorb. I want God to move. I want God to set me free. I want God to heal. I want God to deliver. I want God to provide like never before in this place, in this community, for such a time as this. Tonight, I just invite you to come and find a place to pray tonight, because there are many more. There were many more that I invited that said they were coming that did not show today, some that left after Sunday school today. There are many in the community who are broken and hurting, Maybe you have loved ones that aren't saved. Or maybe you want to come and pray for the new youth that Pastor Joe was referring to. Maybe you want to come and pray for the children that were here today. Maybe you want to come and pray for our country. Maybe you want to come and pray for the United States military. Or maybe you just want to come and lay at Jesus' feet and offer a prayer of thanksgiving and let him bring rest to you. Jesus said, those are weak and heavy laden, come unto him and he will give rest. Tomorrow is Labor Day. You can rest in the Lord tonight. Maybe you want to come and pray for revival spread across this land like never before. Let's just take time tonight as we conclude this awesome Sunday on our knees in prayer. Bowed before prayer in prayer. Let's seek the face of the living God while he may be found. Jesus.
Says, do not be afraid. The voice of truth says, This is for my glory. Out of all the voices calling out to me, I will choose to listen and believe the voice of truth. Oh, the voice of truth tells me a different story. The voice of says do not be afraid and the voice of truth says this is for my glory out of all the voices calling out to me i will choose to listen and believe the voice of truth of truth, you are telling a different story. Status quo. What's popular? What's easiest? Is not the road we're going. Lord, we heed your words. Do not be afraid. Only believe. Lord God, we love you because you love us. Oh Lord, may we see more. says do not be afraid and the voice of truth says this is for your glory and of all the voices calling out to me i will choose to listen and believe the voice of truth i'm going to read the second verse oh what i would do to have the kind of faith it takes to stand before a giant with a sling and a stone surrounded by the sound of a thousand warriors shaking in their armor wishing they had had the faith to stand but the giant's calling out my name and he laughs at me and he reminds me of all the times i've tried before and failed the giant keeps on telling me time and time again boy you'll never win oh you'll never win but the voice of truth tells me a different story the voice of truth says do not be afraid and the voice of truth says this is for my glory out of all the voices calling out to me i will choose to listen and believe the voice of truth oh the voice of truth says this is for my glory of truth says do not be afraid oh the voice of truth says this is for my glory out of all the voices calling out to me i will choose to listen and believe the voice of truth yes lord and that voice says not be afraid. Only believe. Lord, today you have been reigning in this house all day long. Lord God, and we want more of you. Lord, may we desire more of you like never before. May not one person be content with just today. Lord God, may we desire to be soaking in the spirit of the Almighty. Lord, thank you for breakfast this morning, our prayer service, our Sunday school time. Thank you for Holy Communion time today. 
Thank you for children's church time today. Lord God, thank you for men's and women's group tonight. Thank you for the testimonies that were shared. Thank you, Lord, for a time of worship corporately together tonight. Thank you, Lord, for Mark chapter 5 and Mark chapter 2 in this prayer time tonight. But most importantly, Father, we say thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. For, Lord, without you, we would be like a ship without a sail. But with you, we are complete. We are whole. And most importantly, we are forgiven. Bless us now, Lord, with traveling mercies as we head home. Watch over us, protect us. Bring rest to our body tonight, Lord, as we prepare to go back to work and school this week. Tomorrow being Labor Day, many may be off, those that have to work. Bless them, Lord. But ultimately, I pray as we continue to draw closer to one another in times of fellowship, breaking of bread, devotion and doctrine, as well as prayer, like today has been, Lord, this has been an Acts 2 experience today. Carrying out Peter's sermon after Pentecost. And may we want more. Lord God, may we continue to come to the well. Jesus Christ, who gives living water every day. Lord, as we continue to draw closer to one another, more important, may we continue to draw closer to you. For your word declares in James 4, if we draw nigh or draw near unto you, you will draw near unto us. And Lord, today, you have been really, really close. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all Tuesday night. If you can join us, that would be great. And then Wednesday night, of course, for regular Bible study at 6. God bless you. I do have some calendars if anybody's interested in those.